Imagine you're about to start reading a book. It's a book you uh, have been looking forward to for a long time. You're very familiar with the story. It's a very famous book and now you're about to read it for yourself. So you open the first page and you look at the first word and you start to sound out the letters. And you start to look at the punctuation and try to figure out how that's going to affect the reading. Except, of course, that you haven't read that way since you were six or seven years old and you were in school. You've done so much reading over the years that by now you open a page, you look at the, the words on it and your brain just unscrambles the meaning and you don't even have to consciously think about it. You can just absorb yourself in the story and, and appreciate the, the expression and the emotion and everything that's going on in it. When it comes to reading music though, we have a difficulty because we've got this contradiction. We're mature enough to understand a piece of music when we hear it and, and appreciate it and enjoy the emotion, the expression that's in it. But when it comes to our reading of it, we're still like that six or seven year old and many of us, our, our reading skills in music never match our reading skills for literature. And that doesn't sit well with us, this, this contradiction between um, how we read words as adults and how we read music. It just, it just feels wrong. And so we try to take shortcuts to, to make up for that, that gap. So we try to play the music from memory and we try to avoid looking at the page. We often quit in disgust and then we come back to try again later on. It's a hard slog and we need something to sustain us during, during that slog. And I think the thing that will sustain us is trying to stay in touch with that part of ourself that, that remembers why we were attracted to a certain piece of music in the first place. And that always comes down to the emotion. We're attracted to some emotion in that music, whether it's a happy uh, piece or sad or melancholy or mysterious, whatever it is that drew us to us. We can lose sight of that when we get bogged down in the nuts and bolts of, of the notes and the rhythm. And we forget what it is that we actually love about the music. So in music, Emotion is expressed in a number of different ways. Um, it could be through the dynamics, which is the louds and softs of the music and how it you know, journeys from, from one extreme to another. Um, it can be through the articulation, that means whether we're playing legato or staccato or, and the interplay between those two. Um, and it can be in something like a rubato, where, where, um, where we're sort of stretching the rhythm or we're slowing down in certain places and accelerating in other places. Um, these are all very common mechanisms, not all in one piece, usually, although it can be, um, but certainly there'll always be dynamics and there'll always be some form of articulation, whether we're playing the entire piece, just legato, or it's, it's a more of a mixture between legato and staccato and portato and what other, other styles we have. And the good news is that we don't have to wait until we're playing the music absolutely perfectly in terms of the notes and rhythm before we start to explore that, that uh, emotional side of things. So we can start to look at the dynamics, we can start to uh, examine the, the articulation and maybe we can start to experiment a little bit with, with rubato if, if that's appropriate to the piece. And in fact it's really important that we don't put off that examination of, of, of these different elements until later on uh, because frequently what happens is we, we master a piece of music in terms of the notes and rhythm and we go, okay, that's great, that's done, I'm moving on to the next piece. But in fact, that's just your, your starting point. That's just your base level. You've got the notes and rhythm right. So now it's time to remember why you like this music in the first place or what you want to communicate with it and start to work on how you're going to communicate that emotion through it, how you're going to um, express yourself through the music. So to illustrate this, I'm going to play a piece of music for you, um, a piece that I'm particularly fond of. It's called A Little Song by Kachaturian. Um, it's about a grade three level, so it's accessible to a lot of you if, if, if you like it. Um, and I'm going to play it two ways. So the first time I'm going to play it, it's just going to be purely notes and rhythm, nothing else. And then the second time I'm going to try and put more expression into it. I'm going to add dynamics. I'm going to add some rubato. Um, there's a certain amount of articulation in it, but that wouldn't be a main feature. But So have a listen to the two different playings. See if you can get my point and see if you can notice the difference um, between the two playings in terms of how it touches you emotionally. I hope you'll be inspired to revisit maybe some pieces that you've worked on in the past and have maybe moved on from before um, exploring the levels of expressiveness that, that are actually inherent in any piece of music that we maybe forget about and where we're so eager to get to the next piece of music. So you might feel inspired to go back and, and re-examine those pieces and see if you can bring them to the next level by adding these different elements. To come back to our book analogy, think of it as the difference between hearing um, a book narrated by a robot and narrated by a great actor. There's going to be a huge difference in uh, what you extract from the story in terms of uh, how it touches you emotionally.
So what do you think? Was the second performance better? Was it worse? Was there no difference? I find music played this way is much more satisfying uh, an experience rather than, than just hammering through the notes. Um, to really take your time uh, and, and explore it a little bit and see what kind of story it suggests. Um, and that story becomes apparent um, when you start to add things like dynamics and articulation, as we said in Rubato. The music starts to suggest things to you. Um, could be imagery, it could be emotion, it could be, um, you know, a, a conversation between two people, anything like that. Things will start to come into your mind as, as you play with more expressiveness that then helps you in turn to reinterpret the music and, and express it differently and, and there's a certain amount of exploration and experimentation that goes into um, finishing any piece of music when you're bringing it to this next level. So I'd love to hear how you get on so have a go let me know in the comments. It's free to like and subscribe and this is the video you should watch next. I'll see you next time. Happy practicing!